<clears throat> I ate a tomato, so I didn't have anything in my fingers. All right. Go ahead, yeah. Coach. Open statement, and then we'll open for a question for Danny Jones. Well, we did every, in my opinion, we did everything we had to do to win this game. And it, it's a great lesson for our players because I've told them and told them and told them, and sometimes I speak too much and they don't listen, that any basketball game can change on one possession. And this one did. We got a double digit lead. They're ready to go home. They're on a road trip. They're gonna get a you split a road trip in this league, you're happy and they could go home happy. And they shoot a three, they miss it, and we have two guys look at the rebound, it hits the ground, they pick it up, we follow them, and they make an and one, and they're like, Oakland doesn't want to win. And bam, they scored 18 points in five possessions against our zone. And before that play, they couldn't score against our zone. So the game changed, and the good for us is that we handled it. And this guy to my left here, as good as Trey played and everything, if I had a game ball to give, it's to the guy to my left here. Because when it was all going bad, and when it goes bad, things go bad, and we couldn't make a shot, point blank range, we couldn't make a shot. Chris didn't have one of his better games tonight. You know, you know, everybody, he has those all, you know, not all the time, but he has them. Chris will have them, especially the more important you become in an offense, when you don't play at that same level, it looks, you know, it hurts your team. So Chris, who now has gained the status of we got to go to him and he's got to get double digits and he's going to score. Had a game that wasn't going well. And the ball wouldn't go in and Blake missed a wide. It rattled in one in and out that would have changed. You know, the guy to my left here, everybody thinks we won the game because of his free throws. No, when we were down three or whatever it was, we got down. He got two or three consecutive offensive rebounds that kept possessions alive for us and we scored. If he doesn't get those rebounds, we fall down five, seven points, and we don't win the game. Yes, he made big free throws, especially after missing two. He came back and made four or six in a row, whatever it was. And that's how you win. Nothing worth anything's easy, and it wasn't easy. It could have been easy, but it wasn't. And the last thing I'll say before the players talk is I want to give Green Bay a ton of, you know, what, what uh, Sundance has done with that team and that program is, is amazing. Um, you know, those, those, you know, the last couple of years, Green Bay came in here and, and, you know, I'm not sure, uh, you know, anybody would leave the gym going, wow, that team, you know, I think people leaving the gym and I go, wow, that's a darn good Green Bay team, a darn good Green Bay team. So give him a ton of credit. All right, we can open up for questions for players. Yeah, Coach, uh, uh, Isaiah, I guess, uh, kind of take us through, you know, take us through that last minute where you were getting put on the line and you just continued, just continued to make free throw after free throw after free throw. Did, did you find yourself actually in, in a bit of a rhythm? Yeah, um, especially on the last four. Um, it just felt everything felt good, you know. Been practicing, I shoot extra free throws at practice. I know times like this, it might be where I get an offensive rebound, somebody fouls me, or I get a defensive rebound, somebody immediately fouls me. So I just feel like that's probably the main thing I can do to help the team is rebound and make my free throw. That's what happened tonight. Something I've talked about in the broadcast before, like you with your game, like you provide something that the Oakland program hasn't had in a little in a little while. You, you have size, the ability to do a ton of different things on the basketball court. You you enjoy do you enjoy that role? I really do, especially since I'm so I'm really one of the younger people on this team. You know, people don't really know that I'm a sophomore, so it, it just Having a chance to do that at this at this <clears throat> level and at my age is different, and I just embrace it, especially being around the guys that I'm around. Anybody, we got like multiple people that can go for 20 points a game, and I feel like with having that, I gotta find another way to be able to stay on the court at all times. Uh, the last one for me, Trey. For you, uh, you drew 11 fouls uh, here today. Is there? Uh, I asked Isaiah about a rhythm. Is there, is there a bit of a rhythm? He drew 11, but he was probably fouled 33. <laughs> <laughs> Those were the words of Greg Camp. Uh, no, but Trey, did you feel a rhythm in, as, as far as that goes? I mean, getting the ball and, and finding the contact and getting the whistle? You know, that's just kind of been a main focus for me was to try to get to the foul line a lot more. Beginning of the season, first half of the season, I wasn't shooting as many free throws as I want to, and that's 
mostly because I was taking some pretty bad shots, not going to the rim, not doing what I, you know, am used to doing here. And that's something I'm like, okay, what's an easy way I can get some baskets to get myself going, to get the momentum going um, and score, and that's just getting to the free throw line, uh, drawing those fouls and think I'm getting some calls now. You know, I'm still getting beat up, but that's just something that can start momentum for me and my team, just seeing some buckets go in at all. You know, that's good for anyone that can get a feeling. So that's kind of the rhythm, I guess, there. Um, Isaiah, uh, you guys have been playing super physical in the last couple of games, uh, especially tonight. Uh, what's been working for you guys in the paint and perimeter as of late? Honestly, I feel like just moving around, um, we praise cutting to the basket. So seeing how open it is, I really, at first, when they were first told me, I was, it was like a drag to me. Um, I wasn't used to it. But seeing how open it is the last few games, it is working for us. And then just having Trey be able to, Pound everybody in the paint, and they not like they're too worried about Trey, so it makes it wide open, honestly. So, yeah, that's the main, main, main focus. Thank you. Uh, coming into this game, you've also been a glue guy for this team. Um, how do you continue to expand upon that role? Um, sticking around the guys, just seeing like where their spots are. Um, I know most of the time when Trey's on the right side of the block, he's going a hook shot, and he's either going to come right to me or he's going to go to the front rim. So, I watch that a lot and just seeing where everybody is on the floor. Like when shot clock is going down, look for Blake, stuff like that, honestly. Mm -hmm. Anything else for the student athletes? Thanks, Harris. Thank you. Trey, you make your free throws tonight at 35. Yeah, we won. In the three. <laughs> <laughs> that's, pretty, that's a pretty good answer. <laughs> uh, Camp, what what changed in the second half? You know, it just that what? The, the whole mindset of the game, we imposed our will. One of the things I haven't said, and I, I feel bad I didn't say anything in the, in the locker room afterwards, too, is I thought Tone Hunter played his best game uh, in an Oakland uniform. He's had spurts, but as a total game, um, I thought he played really well. He missed a checkout at an important time, but everybody's going to make a mistake here and there. He had three assists and no turnovers. He got the tempo going. A game We knew a game was going to be a really slow tempo. It was the tempo we want when we're playing Michigan State or Ohio State or somebody like that. But when we're playing in our league, we want a much faster tempo. And he got that going for us. And, you know, we got that. I started in this because he played so well. I started in the second half, and we, we had a great start to the second half, and everything's going our way. And then that play just changed everything. It just did. It. You could just see it in their eyes that, that oh, geez, we can win this game. And then they started making shots. And, uh, you know, they had uh, number two made three for five, and uh, Noah Reynolds, who we did an unbelievable job on until then, you know, he ended up with, what, 12 points? And, you know, our goal was to keep him single digits. Everybody says he's the best player in the league. I think I got the best player in the league. I'm sure Sundance thinks he is and other people, you know. But you got to shut those people down. And we are – I thought defensively we were just as good as we've ever been until that play happened. And, uh, and then it just, you know, I think he made a nice little adjustment. They threw it into the high post. And they hit some shooters and they made some shots. And it, it's, it's really – the game of basketball and shooting is, is really contagious. And once somebody else is making one, then I can make one. And I'm feeling good. And, you know, right now, Golke's not feeling good. And he can't make anything. And he's, how many has he had go in and come out? You know? And it's just, it's a contagious game. And they, they caught it. And, boy, they were good. And they took that lead. And, and, again, you can, you know, I'm sure that, you know, the internet keyboard people are going to go, oh, Oakland lost another 10-point lead. Well, they got good players with scholarships too, right? But what Oakland did is they handled the losing that lead and got the lead back and won the game. And the last I was told is winning is what's important, and we found a way to win, as Trey said, as he walked out of here. I, in big moments, especially defensively for this Oakland team, kind of Rocket Watts always seems to be at the forefront of that. Can you can you take us through what, what Rockets provide? I mean, He's, he's your go-to defensive guy, right? Like you have a guy that is your shooter. He's your defensive shooter, I guess you could say. And I told him, he, he wasn't that happy. I took him out with seven minutes to go in the game. And he looked at me like, you know, because he was playing good. And I said, Rock, I need you the last four minutes. After the four time out, we're going, man, and you're guarding that kid. And I need you rested, 
mentally ready with one thought. He ain't scoring on me. And uh, um, we made a mistake. Again, I'm beginning to believe it's me because we, we came out of a timeout and I told a player, we're going to switch the ball screen on tone. So, and Rocket's job was not to leave that kid. So this possession, they ran a ball screen to Reynolds and the guy guarding 34 switched it. No, only if it was Tom, right? And 34 makes that open three. And that was the only mistake we made when we went man the last four minutes. Other than that, I don't think they scored. I mean, once they took that lead, other than that three, I don't think they scored. And it had a lot to do with Rocket took a great player and wouldn't let him get to the rim. And so, you know, every guy I got is really, really good at something and average at other things and needs to get better at this. And one of the things that Rocket can do to keep the everything out of it and say, guard that kid. There aren't many better than him. Uh, last one for me, Blake Lampman is playing his best basketball uh, during his career here at Oakland. You almost didn't have him for the season. What, what about having him back and, and how close you guys were maybe to, to not having him this year? Yeah, we still got a lot of games to go, and he's still a little fragile in that hip, so let's not, let's not uh, you know, <laughs> think about that kind of thing. Blake, you, you always want guys in their last year to play on it uninhibited and Blake's had demons over his career and he's finally exonerated and that's not the word x x x whatever the word is that there's a movie about that once right um he's gotten rid of them and he's playing with tremendous confidence he's taking some bad shots uh because of it and i yell at him but i'm not yelling at him too hard about it he understands we got a great you know five years together we understand each other really well I'm just really happy that he's playing. He's five eleven from the three again today, and I've seen him for five years in practice, day after day after day, do what he's doing. And it's, am I surprised? No, I'm. I'm glad it finally got here, and the world's seen it too. I expect him. He's going to have a one for eleven somewhere, but I expect him to be like this eighty percent of the time. He can play with great confidence, and you know what? Like this guy that walked away, they just want to win. They've all they've all had accolades. They've all had personal accolades. They don't they don't need those. They want to win. They want to play in an NCAA tournament. They want to, you know, get a championship ring. Right. And and that's why we able to win a game like this. Uh, Coach, uh, you guys played pretty damn near a, close, a complete game uh, tonight. And in hearing what a lot of Horizon League coaches say, it's a pretty tough thing to do in this league, and it requires a lot of preparation both physically and mentally um i'm going to defer to your expertise on this how much of that is intrinsic in your players and how much of that is based on what you coach and teach them to do in the off season and during the season it ain't the x's and o's it's the jimmy and joe's you've heard that i'm sure and it's true it's one of the truest statements there is. you've got to have good players there's nobody who's going to win this league without good players and there's a lot of teams that have good players that aren't going to win this league and it's, it comes down to the players making plays and, you know, overcoming adversity. What Isaiah Jones did tonight was a classic example of how a team that wins a championship overcomes adversity. There's there's teams that I've coached who would have lost this game because we couldn't come back from that, you know, gut punch that they gave us. And, um, you know, I'd like to think that over the years I've had a great coaching staff, and over the years my coaching staff does a wonderful job and we get better. Um, but the last two Februarys, we've fallen apart. Now, I think injuries have had a lot to do with it. But, you know, as Blake told them in the locker room today, we were tied for first on February 1st last year, and on February 1st the year before, we were in first. We didn't go to the NSA tournament. This is just one hurdle, one hurdle. We got another important one on, t on Wednesday, a team that we haven't beaten in here in a while. We beat them in their place, but we haven't beaten them here in probably four years. And so it's a huge game for us Wednesday. I hope the crowd's like it was today. I hope our, our student section is a little bit bigger like it used to be. I mean, it doesn't cost anything to come to a game if you're a student. So I don't know what the excuse would be, but you have a team that's pretty exciting to watch. So I'm just hoping it keeps growing and the momentum keeps going. And, you know, it, it's it's a fun team to watch. I mean, I, we are a fun team to watch. We've got a little bit of everything, speed, athleticism. We can run, we can dunk, we can guard, we can shoot it. 
um, you know, we just take the next hurdle and understand what it is and we'll prep for it. One of the things I think to answer your question, though, the more I think about your question, um, I got an old group, an old group. And so they understand the importance of preparation. A lot of times when you have freshmen and sophomores, they screw around and they don't, they don't, until they've been beaten, until they lose a game, you know, we told them that today's game was a personnel prep game. Why do I, what do I mean by that? Well, this coach has never seen our zone before. We've never seen, we've never coached against him before. And not as an assistant, not as a head coach. So we have no idea what he's going to do tonight. So this is a personnel prep. 34 can't catch and shoot. Zero can't catch and shoot. And we're going to double 21 every time he touches the ball. There's going to be two people on him. And for 32 minutes, we did that. And then, and then that momentum changed and the whole thing changed. You know, I mean, they had their points per possession in the first half were 0 0.88 points per possession. The second half was 1.26. So that's night and day. And so I think older kids, you know, good. Anything else? I got another one. Um, so at first, that was a good one. Thank you. Um, I've heard a lot of bad ones in my day. So obviously, this is not the same Green Bay team that you saw last year, and it's gone through a major reconstructing, major reconstruction. Sorry. Um, as a coach who's been doing this for forty years, you've seen and you've probably gone through this at some point in your career. What do you attribute such a quick turnaround success to? Well, I think that this day and age of the transfer portal has changed everything. I don't think he could have done that without Noah Reynolds, who he brought with him from Wyoming, right? Uh, in the previous, that kid would have had to sit out a year, and he would have, you know, without that kid, I mean, who knows where they're going to be? They're four and two. They're right at the top of the league. Without that kid, they're probably two and four, you know, maybe three and three. Maybe they are four and two, but over the, you know, if we don't have Trey Thompson, what are we? It's just, you know, I'm not criticizing you, I'm just saying it. And so bringing that kid can change things in, in the transfer portal era. It's like us. I mean, we're 16, 17 games into this, and I'm still trying to find out who Tone Hunter is, right? We lost him this summer with injury, then he got injured again. And we're trying to, you know, Isaiah Jones. I'm sure that where Isaiah came from, they're amazed at what he's doing. And it's just being in the right spot and learning and, and growing together as a team and Green Bay will do that, and so will our team. All right. Got all that? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.